So we start uh, with part seven in this video. And in the last part, we saw how Pahom struck a deal with the chief of the Bashkirs. And this chief uh, assures him that he can have as much land as he wants, uh, provided he is able to cover that span of land in a day's time. And he can have it all for a thousand rubles. So that leaves Pahom extremely excited. And uh, he just wants the night to get over. So almost the entire night, Pahom is awake, making future plans, you know. Uh, so he thinks to himself how much land he's going to own and what part of the land is he going to do? Is he going to sow wheat? And in what part will he be uh, planting something else? And how much of it will he be renting out? So these are the plans that are crossing his mind. And uh, while he's having these thoughts, he falls asleep. And uh, then uh, he starts having a dream. But then he wakes up uh, because he hears someone laughing. And he goes outside his hut. And at a distance, he can see the chief of the Bashkirs sitting and he's just rolling in laughter he's laughing he's he's laughing crazily and pahom just wonders what is the joke and there's a man who is lying at his feet a man who is uh, just lying face down at the chief's feet so pahom approaches the chief and when he's at some distance, he realizes, oh, this is not the chief of the Bashkirs. It is the tradesman who had come to give him information about the Bashkir, who stopped at his uh, house overnight and he passed on information about the Bashkirs. And Pahom is shocked. He rubs his eyes because he doesn't believe how the chief can transform into the tradesman. And then he approaches, uh, he goes a little closer and he, he realizes it is not even the chief or the tradesman, but it is that first peasant, uh, remember, in his native village who had actually first told him about another village which was away from his native village where he owned one uh, uh, 40 acres uh, 125 acres of land so th that uh, the peasant who had told him about that first uh, village he sees that peasant and then he goes closer and he's shocked because sitting in front of him is not the chief of the bashkirs it's not the tradesman it's not that peasant in fact it is the devil himself so the devil is sitting and the devil with his hooves and his horns and he's he's narrowed his eyes and he's focusing on Pahom and he's having the laugh of his lifetime. And lying at the feet of the devil, he can see a man with trousers and an open shirt and he just wonders who it is. And when they turn the man around, it is Pahom himself. And Pahom just, he just wakes up with a fright and he realizes it's a nightmare. But something in him also tells him that this is not just a nightmare, it's also a vision. Maybe it's a kind of premonition, it's a kind of warning, but it leaves him very uneasy. Though he tries to convince himself that it's nothing, it's just a dream. Um, and then, of course, he wakes up his husband, uh, the servant who has accompanied him all the way to the land of the Bashkirs, and he tells him, come on, come on, it's time to get ready because we have to be there before daybreak and then when he reaches the bashkirs uh, and the, they offer him some kumis and some tea and but he says no uh, let's hurry up he's in a te tearing hurry because he wants to start walking as uh, soon as he can and he says no no let us uh, start our journey because i want to be there right at the crack of dawn and they all head towards the destination from where he is supposed to start plotting his land. And that brings us to the end of part seven.